Now, please welcome Matt Friedman. How many of us have been in a situation where we're in a foreign country and we're lost and we need help? And so we go up to somebody and we try to articulate in our language that we need help and they respond back in their language and we talk slower thinking that's going to make some kind of a difference and they talk slower thinking they're going to make some kind of a difference. This happens quite often and this is kind of what in my two minutes I'm going to be talking about is how in the human trafficking sector we can use a smartphone to get around this problem of interpretation that we often find when law enforcement people or NGOs come in contact with a potential victim, but they can't communicate with them. So to begin this, let's talk a little bit about the context of what we're dealing with. In human trafficking globally, the new number they've been using is 21 million people who are in slavery-like circumstances. If you were to put those people shoulder to shoulder, it would go from Seoul, Korea to Cape Town, South Africa. So we're talking a large number of people. The number of people in Asia who are in trafficking situation is more than half of that, or around 11.7 million people. Okay, so absorb those numbers a little bit, and now look at these other numbers. What these numbers reflect is how many victims were identified last year out of the total of 11.7 million. How many people were prosecuted and how many convictions in Asia? From this, can you see that we have a major disconnect between what's happening in the real world where you have slaves and what's happening to get them out? Now, there's a number of reasons why this happens. Lack of commitment, lack of understanding, lack of resources. But one thing that we found when we went into the field is a lot of what we face is lack of ability to communicate with people simply because the law enforcement people or the NGO people don't speak the right language. So the problem that we're dealing with is how do you have people who come in contact with potential victims have the opportunity to engage with them when that time exists, at that moment when they need to be there. The solution is in my hand, using smartphone technology. Now, what I'm going to talk about isn't the type of technology that goes into huge networks and gets into complicated data analysis or anything. It's using a simple app, an app that can be put on any Android-type phone. And how this works is very simple. When a law enforcement person in Thailand comes in contact with a potential victim, let me talk a little bit about who these victims are first. In Thailand, you have 2 million people from Myanmar that are in that country, about 350,000 from Cambodia, about 100,000 from Laos. And they absorb into the economies, okay? And some of them are in slave-like circumstances, some of them are okay, but the law authorities don't know who is who. So they come in contact with these people on a regular basis. So let's say that they go to a factory that might have a potential slave person there. They can't communicate with them because they don't even know what country they come from. So what we do with the cell phone is we start off with a situation where you simply show a phone that has maps in there. And you kind of go up to the victim and get them to press their map. When they do that, the second uh, uh, thing that comes up is a video in their own language that says, we're the authorities, we're here to uh, look, see what's going on here, to help you, to find out what it is that you need, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We often use a woman because focus groups identify that it's soothing and they re are more responsive to a, a woman's voice. And then we say we're going to ask you a series of questions. If the answer to the question is yes, press green. If it's no, press red. Are you here against your will, yes or no? green or red? Are you in a situation where you've been deceived or tricked into a situation where you want out, yes or no? Do you feel that the situation you're in needs to change, yes or no? If they press green even once, then you know that you have the potential that something needs to be done. To basically take that person off to the office, to basically get more interpretation, to find out what's going on, and then to use that as a basis of then acting. Why is this important? Because you may only have one opportunity 
to be in front of that particular individual, and you want to make sure that that particular opportunity is going to be useful. In addition to that, what cell phones allow us to do is to take video, to basically take photographs, to take down information, to have information about laws in here, to have checklists, to have all types of things that you can use. So conceivably, in the future, you might find that there is a situation where a police officer might have a gun, a nightstick, and a pimped out phone that allows them to basically use the tools that the technology allows us to do to do law enforcement more effectively to basically help us to achieve an impact of number one, victims being identified that ordinarily wouldn't have gotten identified. Number two, more criminals identified as part of that process. And number three, less trafficking. This approach is being done by the United Nations, working with an organization called the Mekong Club, which is a group of businesses that come together to fight the business of trafficking. There was a person named Ken Law, who used to work for Google, who works uh, now with Mother Apps, who's doing the application of this, Thai government officials, NGOs. So the collective community came together, tried to come up with something that's simple, easy, replicable, that allows us to address a problem that has been an issue for a long time. Thank you very much.